How many of you right now, I'm trying not to holler, have been drawn into the attack? All because you just wanted to go one time. All because you just wanted to go over. All because you just wanted to spend the night. All because you just wanted to stay a little bit later. All because you thought it was just okay to do it one time. All because you felt like, well, I can get away with it once or twice. And once or twice became a habit. And a habit became an addiction. And addiction almost puts you in the grave. Because there was no discipline to the nature. And so now here we are. He's in Sodom. He and Abram have disconnected. And I need to park there for a second. Because some of you can't move forward because of how you interpret disconnection or separation. Disconnection does not mean disassociation. Disassociation is a severing. Disconnection is a separating. Now, some of you got to understand, you're going to have to disconnect from certain people in order to go where it is that you need to go. But when I have to disassociate myself from you, that means I really almost hate I ever met you. That means I don't really want my name even brought up with your name. That simply means you and I do not have a future. There is no reason for the two of us to even come together. And I probably don't even want to see you again. Some of you hurt so bad when you separate that you define it in your spirit as disassociation. And so when you see people, you feel a wound automatically because you don't know how to let go. But that's not true. When you disassociate, we will have a wound because when you rip the two of us apart, both of us have a scar from where we were once attached. But when we disconnect, we both are saying it is best for us to walk away from each other so that we can still survive. And some of you are gonna to have to make that decision before 2021 comes. Some people you are going to have to disconnect from or separate from, and then there are some you are going to have to be cut severely from. You got to make that decision. That's good. Abram goes to where he said he's going to go over in Canaan, and he camps out over in Memory, and he has a couple of brothers that he's parked with. And he lives his life. And the last time he sees Lot, they disconnect. And Lot chooses the more fertile ground, and he's in the city doing his thing. And as he's doing his thing, there's an attack that happens. Now look at the tension in the text. Because everybody was doing the thing in Sodom. The scripture says that Sodom was very evil. It was very wicked. It was a place where everybody allowed their nature to rule in the environment. So the environment and the nature look the exact same. And we have our guy that is sucked into the middle. And now we've got this battle of the nine kings happen at the same time. Look at how it all merges together. That if we have no understanding of what's going on in the world, sometimes the world will swallow us up. Just think about it. If we weren't connected to the media, find out what was going on with COVID-19 and we're still having church. Just think about it. If we're not connected and we don't understand what's happening, we're not paying any attention to what's going on globally. We're not paying any attention to what's going on with the elections. We're not paying any attention, but we're shouting, but we're dancing. We cannot be that way. We must be well informed. So because he's not well informed, he's in there cooking, cleaning, having a good time. And the whole time that's happening, there's an attack. The people are partying. They're having a good time, and the whole time that's happening, there's an attack. Their kids out in the front yard, their kids out in the backyard, and the whole time that's happening, there's an attack. Come on. They're sitting down at dinner, they're talking about what it was like yesterday and today, and we're having a wonderful time, sweetheart. There's an attack. Somebody's coming home from work, talking to their spouse on the phone, talking about how much he loves them and how much they miss them, and the whole time, there's an attack. 
They're not paying attention because they don't know that what they are under, the king who is rebellious has caused an allegiance of kings to come up against their city. And in the moment when they least expect it, there's an attack. 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 And when he comes upon them, the scripture says that they take everything. They take the goods. They take the people. They take all of their goods. They take all of their provisions. The Bible says that they took it. Who am I talking to right now that's been under attack and things have been taken from you? Your joy has been taken from you. Your peace has been taken from you. Some of your money has been taken from you. Even some of your spouses have been taken from you. Some of your children have been taken from you. You were under attack. It caught you off guard and you lost it. Was taken and the Bible says they took a lot too they took everything and as they take it they gather everything these kings and they make their way out they took it the Bible says and went their way that means they didn't think twice about it. They took it and went their way. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but somebody has been taken advantage of. They took advantage of you and went their way. They had their way with you and went their way. Hurt your children and went their way. Tried to rob you and went their way. And you are stuck. Have you ever been in a place where even your fight wasn't good enough? See, I don't believe that they were necessarily taken off guard. But what I do believe is that the guard was even taken. Yeah, I'm talking about when you're ready to defend yourself, but even your readiness isn't good enough. I'm talking about when you know you're powerful enough to defend yourself, but you ain't got enough power. And you have to make the conscious decision, do I fight or do I just try to hold on so I can survive? Because if I fight, they're going to kill me. But if I survive, I may be able to come up with a plan. I'm talking to somebody right now that is surviving. You've been trying to figure it out. You stopped swinging. You stopped fighting. You stopped trying to figure it out. You stopped swinging. You stopped fighting. And you're just hanging there trying to see, will anybody come and get me? Does anybody even see me? Does anybody know that I'm missing? Uh, and in your mind, you're having to wrestle with, I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was camped outside of the city. And had I stayed where I was, I wouldn't be caught up. But now I'm too deep into it to get out of it. Is anybody here Come on. Come on. know what I'm talking about? Taken. Take Pastor, you never gave me the topic of the lesson. The topic of the lesson is, I got a lot on my mind. And I'm talking to those of you right now. You got a lot on your mind. You're trying to figure it out. I got a lot on my mind. Abram, yeah, I feel that. Turn it up some. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I feel the portals open. Abram is at home. 
And this is the same Abram now. You got to hear this. This is the same Abram in a few chapters earlier that has his wife, Sarah. And because of the drought, they go down into Egypt. And when they get to Egypt, he leans over and tells his wife, when we get there, you got to tell them that you're my sister because they're going to kill me. So when we get there, please don't tell them I'm your husband because this won't be well for you and it won't be well for me. So he lies. And they take Sarah because Sarah is so beautiful. And they give him all of this, all these cows and these oxen because of how pretty she is. And then the Bible says that God gave Pharaoh a dream. He He tormented that king. And the king woke up and said, why didn't you tell me that this was your wife? Take everything and get out. Now this shocks me because when we get to the point to where I'm talking about now, Abram doesn't respond in fear. He responded in fear when he went to Egypt. But when somebody ran from captivity, and said, there's a war going on in Sodom and they took everything and they took Lot too. And when they said they took Lot too, something struck him. And we don't see him saying, I'm afraid. The Bible says that he went and got his allegiance of brothers and he went and got 300 and trained men and said we're riding out because we've got to go get him and this solves a problem for some of you right now God said I'm sending somebody to get you out of your dilemma somebody to get you out of your circumstance I'm sending somebody that's not afraid I'm sending somebody that's going to behave in courage I'm sending somebody that says I'm on my way question is, will you come get me if they take me? Will you come get me if they take everything I have? Oh my God. And Abraham saddles up. We've got three allegiances now. We've got the five kings. We've got the four kings. And now we've got a king named Abram who has no title. And he saddles up. And he takes his coalition of brothers with him. And the Bible says at night, glory to God, that they begin to divide themselves. And this is the same man that was afraid in Egypt that has now put strategy to a circumstance and says, I'm going to divide myself because I have a lot on my mind and I'm on my way to pick him up I'm on my way to bring him back there is no way you're going to take what God told me to protect and I not fight for it the Bible says that he gets there and not only does he take lot he takes everything Oh yeah, type that on the line. Everything. If you have enough faith to believe that you can get everything, I want you to write it down right now. Everything. I mean everything. He's going to give it back. Everything. I feel that thing in my spirit. Turn that organ up and give him everything. Praise. God's going to give you back everything. God's going to allow you to come get everything. Everything that you need. Everything that you lost. God sending a warrior that has enough of anointing, enough courage, enough power, enough strategy to say, I'm on my way. And I'm not just going to leave empty handed. I'm going to leave with you. I'm going to leave with your stuff. I'm going to leave with everything that you were taken from. I'm on my way. So the Bible says, he gets it and he brings them back and I'm going to leave you with this 
I read a study. And in the study they were asking, is there a difference between the phrase in my mind and on my mind? And I thought the study was interesting. And when I read the final results, it says there's not that much difference. But the difference is this. When a thing is on your mind, it is an obsessive thought. It is a thought that preys on your thinking process compared to worry causes you to be afraid to even ask certain questions because what you think is a lot to others you think is probably too little. And then there was the phrase, in my mind, or in mind. And they said, when you look at the phrase in mind, in mind simply means this, that it is above thinking. It is higher thinking. It is planned out thinking. It is strategic thinking. So it vacillates between the two. And what am I telling you? Why did I even bring that up? Because as you live this life, you won't live in one or the other. You're going to live in both. There will be things that are on your mind that keep you from doing what you have in mind. And then there are things that you have in mind that you won't do because of what you have on your mind. So your job tonight is to learn how to manage the shift from what you have in mind and things that are on your mind. I don't want you to spend another night in worry and I don't want you to spend another night trying to figure out if it's going to work it out. What I want you to do is learn how to move back and forth, how to prepare and how to plan and how to strategize because this is what Abram had in mind. I'm going to get him. I'm going to bring him back. Had he been worried, he wouldn't have been able to divide himself because he would have already been in pieces. And my job tonight is to pray for your mind.